our community, as much as it wants to be concerned about disability, people are disabled because of environment and access. When we looked at a range of projects around the Adelaide City Council, the access uh, was far from optimum at the Aquatic Centre. And so our role was really to bring together a group of people and to consult further than that, to really look at what would be needed in order to make people who would otherwise not access be able to come to the Aquatic Centre and enjoy a lifestyle of wellbeing and health and recreation like everybody else. Working with the Access and Inclusion Panel has been fantastic for me. It's really given me a great insight into what they view as barriers within the centre and, and what the priorities are for us to work on. Providing certain equipment and awareness of how we treat people and, and how we deal with difficult situations and they're also integral into you know, recommending training for our staff. Participating in the disability awareness training has allowed a, a staff member such as myself, being customer service focused, the ability to offer more of an interaction with people that may require some level of assistance. I think it's really important for customer service officers to talk with your own teams. Everybody takes on different information in different ways. Remembering that not everybody always needs assistance, that you should always ask if somebody does require your help. So the barriers to access and inclusion at our centre was really based around the compliance that started right at our car park and flat pathways from the car park to our reception area. We needed to install automatic doorways at our customer service areas to just make access to and from our centre as easy and inclusive as possible. Our accessible change rooms were in a poor state and were a real barrier of why people didn't visit our centre. So we needed to improve those and also we needed to look at entry and exit to our 50 metre pool and our leisure water. Probably for the first time we'll have the opportunity to actually use the centre. We've got a son who's 11 years old. He has severe cerebral palsy. He's got very good cognition and loves swimming. When he gets into the pool, his body is different, if that makes sense. He kicks in a way, he uses it, and to the point where people have come up to us and said, uh, you can't even tell he has cerebral palsy. So that's how the water transforms him. So what it means is access and exercise, well-being, health, um, and participation and, and enjoyment for our child. Really the key learning that I picked up from the panel is really to, to integrate access and inclusion into everything that we do. It's really a continuous improvement within our facility. It's the way that we incorporate it into our normal policies and procedures and the way we operate. If we're looking at a renovation, it's at the forefront of our mind in, in terms of making, how can we make this access and inclusive for everybody. So it's really in, in the fabric of what we, how we operate now and moving forward in all of our decisions.